Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast. Each week, your host, Casey Haston, Director of Recruiting at VIP, will bring you valuable insights from thought leaders, introduce you to incredible companies, and bring you tips for landing your dream job from our team of executive recruiters at VIP. And now, Casey Haston. Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast, a podcast devoted to adding value to your career or candidate search, brought to you by VIP. I'm your host, Casey Haston. I'm an executive recruiter, director of recruiting with VIP, and your all-around hiring guru. And you know, I want to help you find your passion. I want to help you find what really excites you to get up in the morning and to go to work because if you find your passion, you're never going to work a day in your life. And so I'm really excited to br- to introduce you today because our guest today is none other than Paul Fink, the maverick millionaire. Paul is not just a successful entrepreneur. He's a trailblazer who has revolutionized the way we perceive business, wealth creation, and personal development. With over two decades of experience in coaching, mentoring, and performing countless, or transforming countless lives, Paul's expertise spans across various industries, earning him the title of the Maverick Millionaire. Throughout his journey, Paul has shattered conventional norms, proving that the path to success is not a one-size-fits-all formula. He's a sought-after speaker, best-selling author, and an embodiment of what it takes to challenge the status quo and create one's destiny. Thank you so much for being here today, Paul. It is absolutely my pleasure. And how are you today? I am amazing. I have had such an incredible week so far, you know, and I think it all, I'm still kind of flying high. So you and I, I love to talk to people about how I get connected with people. And you and I got connected at the Rockstar Accelerator 2024 conference. Here, here. And I think it's really incredible because as we were doing our one-on-one the other day, how long have you sponsored this conference? Yeah, so this is with Craig Doeswald and I sponsored, I got introduced to him and the same weekend I got introduced to him because of the value of being introduced, the good referral network. Uh, I dove deep and started working with him right away. And that was uh, approximately 10 years ago. You know, I mean, that speaks volumes and not only to your investment in yourself, but then your investment back into others because of what you gained from that original conference. Yes. Yeah. Whenever I I engage with people, one of the methodologies in the way I network my business and what I teach is to uh, go big or go home, A, and B is to do a deep dive and to really connect on a deep level. All too many people are... Um, for lack of a better word, hit and run drivers. And they do that in, in business, they do it in life, where they're, they're friends with somebody transiently for a short period of time, then they're off to new friends, and it's constantly this constant motion and change. Whereas with like Craig, I met him, I liked his community, and I did a deep dive and became one of his number one sponsors for every event he's done in the last 10 years. And I do that in in focused areas, centers of influence, I call it, to be there as a staple, as a a stand in that community. And when you start living life that way, it it deepens everything you do. I, I think that is so important. And I think you bring up a really key point about networking, because so many times I hear people say, oh, networking just doesn't work. We just go, we exchange cards. And I'm like, you're not networking. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're, they're just doing a little bit of palm uh, sweating together, but they're not really networking. They're not, they're not staying focused on, on who the other person is, what they're about, and how they can serve them. They're not really connecting with the person. They're doing platitudes and then running out the door saying, oh, what I get from it. Rather than going in there with a real focused energy of how can I serve the people here and connect with them long term. And when you come with that that approach, when you come with that concept, it changes everything. It changes the whole playing field for you. And in that way, I know we're, we'll be talking about interviewing in that, that's the same approach to get a 
job, to get a profession, to build a, be a part of a community, whether it's a networking community or a company, how do you engage yourself with them so that you're actually building a deep relationship, not just kind of passing through the night? Yeah, and I love what you just said about engaging yourself with the company that you work with. I, you know, I work for VIP who also sponsors this podcast and I just said something. I want to give a shout out to my company just real quick. Do you mind? Go right ahead. Because I also uh, work with Success North Dallas and we have our young executives and I, you know, we had one event where we had charged for it, but then VIP ended up paying for it. And so I wrote a check to VIP for those fees back six months ago. Today, the managing partner, Mike Haynes, came up to me, handed me that check back with a big void across it. And he's like, you keep this. And I was like, I mean, that's the kind of company you want to be associated with, right? That's great. That's great. Yeah. And it and it goes to the volume of the relationship that you have with them as well, because it's a two way street. And that's what people miss when when they go to network or when they go for a job, it, their focus is well, what's in it for me? What what are they going to do for me? What's going to happen for me? And when you switch that around and you stay focused on how you can serve them, it's it's an instant. It's a universal law called universal law of reciprocity, mm -hmm. where as soon as you look to do something for them, they are dying to return the favor. They're looking for the opportunity. And that's what that exchange of checks was all about for, with your company. And it's how to approach your engagement in an interview is walk in thinking, how am I here to serve them today? And as soon as all your questions are about what's going on with the company and how can I add to the growth, to the benefit, to the value of this company, you, you cannot help but get the position. Because everyone else is like, well, what's the benefits package? What, what, what is my vacation time? What are you paying me? Don't ask any of those questions. Thank you. Talk about what's going on with the company and how you can help the company and how your skill sets are going to help the company move in a different place, in a, in a be more powerful, be more productive, be whatever the position demands, only you're there to add to them, not the other way around. And watch that law of reciprocity kick in. I love that you brought up the law of reciprocity. And, you know, this is one that, have you read the book, The Go-Giver? Yes, of course. So, and that's one of the rules, the law of reciprocity and the law of receiving, right? And I mm -hmm. struggle with that because I want to be the one giving all the time. And I jeopardize myself. Do you, do you feel the same way or are you like, I can oh, help no. you? <laughs> you? You've got to be a good receiver. I know. I know. Got, listen, everything's a two-way street. Everything. And so it's one of the key components. Once you recognize that, that you're a good giver, oh, man, I love to give. I love to give. Unless you're a good receiver, there's always going to be a disconnect because you're not allowing them to have the same gift of engaging with you as you give to others. I'm working and on it. And it's an amazing thing. Yeah, aren't we all? <laughs> and it's, what I, wanna, what I wanna stress is, think of that with everything that you do. How are you, how are you engaging with people and is that how you are receiving them? And when you flip the switch, when you start looking at the other side of the equation, the the golden rule, uh, the golden rule we all know is, uh, you know, do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. But actually, the golden rule is do unto others as they want you to do unto them. Oh, be thinking about how that is received. How do you want people to do on to you? Be aware of some of that engagement. Consider walking their shoes for real, not just putting yourself in, in that position, but actually walk in their shoes. How do they want to be engaged with? Okay. And it flips the whole switch. That, Everything starts changing. 
That is very interesting. And you know, and I knew we were going to do this. We jumped right into it. But yes. I want to back up for just a second because you have such a unique career path. And one of the things you said at the conference that really stood out to me and which really kind of, you know, I was just like, can we meet? Can we please meet? I would love to talk to you one on one, you know, and I'm like a little puppy sometimes, you know, when I want to meet somebody, I call it circling. That's what I do. I circle until you talk to me, you know, there you go. but, um, we'll, but you we'll, said... we'll talk about another way if you'd like, <laughs> we can talk about another way, but we'll, we'll, we'll move on with this conversation. So, but you had talked about how you had not received a salary as a W2 employee for, I believe is a couple of decades, right? My whole career, your whole career. So would you mind sharing with us a little bit about your journey and what so, led you to teaching others, what you've learned? Yeah, so I am I, I'm definitely a maverick. Now it's a brand of mine, you know, that I stepped into being this maverick millionaire that people call me, only I've always lived it one way or the other. I graduated from college and I went to college to be a clinical psychologist. And along the way, I realized that I was not interested in that career path for multiple reasons. One of which was I wasn't interested in going through another eight years or 12 years of schooling and a whole lot of other components. And I went, I applied all that I had been learning in psychology into business and sales. And I graduated from college and went right into straight commission sales in the medical field. And I sold, ended up selling over about 10 year span, almost everything there is in the medical field. Then I ended up doing the same thing in the dental field and selling almost everything there is in the dental field, all of which through straight commission sales or different distribution companies I owned or manufacturing uh, and, and being a wholesaler or a, or a manufacturing rep of certain points. But all of it was on my own terms, being a commission salesperson. And along the way, also engaged with network marketing and multi-level marketing and every, I was the serial entrepreneur. Then, well, then something really key hit into my life. And that is I started a family. And there's a difference between being a great straight commission entrepreneur to making significant abundance in income. And so I was doing well, I was kind of floating along, only then I had started my family and my family got pretty significant. And so I've got six children, three sets of twins. And that was a catalyst to move me into a whole nother stratosphere. And because it, it became real for me that Earning $100,000 was not going to cut it. I live in the Northeast. And so the price of living index is absolutely off the charts. And so I needed a income that was going to support a family of eight at a high level, because that's what I, that's what I felt was my place. And that propelled me to do even more started delving into real wealth building strategies, started understanding and really applying what I had known for years. I had been studying psychology and, and uh, social psychology and reading the, all the journals and the books and finding mentors and lectures and learning all this stuff. Only now it was really getting down and deep and applying it at a deep level. I also learned financial components, did, did a deep dive into real estate and became a, a multi, multi-millionaire through real estate investing. And then people started tapping me. And this is where it really changed. And where I now have come full circle is people started tapping on my shoulder saying, wait, wait, wait a second. You've got a passionate relationship with your wife. You've got six children and you seem to be happy <laughs> and living a passionate lifestyle. And yet we know that you're not working for a corporation with a big expense account this has all been on you and you're you're did it from the ground up like how did you do this and that's when i started coaching people and mentoring people and sharing with them that they too could do the same thing because for me i lived a, a you know almost 20 years of kind of going from from idea to idea and it sounded really good and it felt great but it didn't create the abundance in my life. And it wasn't until I had that catalyst in my life to say, time to get serious, time to get real, that I developed it all. 
And I began to realize anyone can do this. It, it, it's not a matter of, oh, you're born with it or you're, you, you have a silver spoon in your mouth. Everything I created was from scratch, starting from nothing. And now you can do the same. And with that, no matter where you are, what it really means is whatever you want in your life, whatever that engagement looks like, whether it's within a corporation, not within a corporation, building your life, you can do this. And that's been the transition now. And now I've been in this place for 16, almost 17 years of coaching people all around the world in how to really step into their power, how to communicate effectively, how to create that, that magic in their world so that they can live on purpose with intent and have a passionate being about them at all times. I, you know, and I've heard you speak, I've heard you, you know, we've had one-on-ones, but even this right now feels different the way that you just expressed it. It's really, and, and I met your daughter, Katerina, um, yeah. and the new well, addition- One of my daughters. One of the daughters and the new addition to the family, Beanie, a little toy. Yes, indeed. Oh my gosh, a little teacup. It's a golden doodle, right? But it's a teacup. It is a teacup golden she doodle. It's about dying. the size of your hand. Everybody thought she was a toy. She was our mascot at the conference. So yeah. adorable. But I, I actually had a chance to talk to your daughter. And it was a really great conversation. But the one thing I really remember that she said, I was like, oh my God, three sets of twins? And she goes, built-in best friends. Oh, Yes, indeed. Yeah, it's really amazing. Um, not only have we built a great life, but we've also built a great community. And our family is our community. Um, I've got some of the closest children there is. And now they're not children. Uh, the youngest is 22. Uh, so two 22-year-olds, two 23-year-olds, and two 27-year-olds. And with that, it's... Uh, uh, they are some of the best friends. They're they're all coming in for the holidays now. Mm -hmm. They're all uh, uh, coming in. The 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 trains have started. Uh, so we had a couple kind of arrived last night. Couple arriving tomorrow, and uh, we're gonna have a house full in no time at all. Well, I I will tell you, having observed your daughter in a professional setting, the ease. Now she she's twenty two or twenty three. She's twenty three. I was gonna say she is not twenty seven. <laughs> No. But she carries herself as if she is. And you have yeah. done such a great job because the ease at which she can insert herself in a room and be comfortable and just watching the interaction between the two of you, I know everything that you're saying is absolutely beautiful. There is that passion within your family. It's so quickly obvious that your and family it, is Here's first. the thing. You know, so many people, they, they want that. And they, they look at my family and they're like, oh, isn't that beautiful? It, it's not by accident. I've been teaching most of Katerina is the daughter that was with me this past weekend and the most of her life, I've been doing this mm -hmm. and I've been teaching and training people how to behave, how to create, how to think, how, how to communicate for her whole existence. And she's been around it. I've, I've made sure of that. So submersing yourself in this type of information will will do something to you it'll change how you show up and it gives you that confidence and that ability i mean from early on she i introduced them all as soon as i had a stage to introduce them on they were up on stage with a microphone in their hand now for some of them it was you know two minutes two minutes out of their year if you will they'll be on stage but that two minutes helped them understand there was nothing to be afraid of it wasn't something foreign to them. And they were able to stand in the same way that they would stand at the playground and, and engage. That makes a difference. So, you know, communicating. I, and I think that's beautiful, but let's fast forward to somebody who is yeah. early in their career. They didn't have the bringing that Katerina had. How, right. what steps would you recommend they take to overcome not that fear of being in front of people, whether it's on stage or whether it's even just going to an interview. There's there's a couple things that you've got to do. One is um, we are the average of the five people we hang out with the most. A lot of people have heard that expression mm -hmm. and yet they put it to the side, they dismiss it. Consider this, 
in every aspect. Take one of the people that you hang out with and consider them in a couple different ways. How do they engage with strangers? Is it positive or negative? Mm-hmm. Are, are they usually grumpy or have a smile on their face at all times? Are they usually adding to the conversation or are they pulling away from it? Are they subtracting from the conversation by inserting things that are negative or inserting things that are inconsequential or don't add anything positive to the, to the communication? What is their engagement in life? Do you want all that as part of yours? Very simple. And when the answer is no, I guarantee you it is having an effect on your life. I guarantee you, you are absorbing that energy and carrying it with you for the rest of your days because you are the average of the people you're hanging out with. And so the first thing to do is to recognize who you're surrounding yourself with You want to be around positive people who are creating a difference in their engagement, who are having fun, who are joyous, who are passionate, who are engaging in the life that they want. Those are the people you want to hang out with. Anybody else, well, you've got to wonder where you're headed. Oh, that's wow. I I don't mince words, guys. (laughs) That's really good right there. I do tell it like it is, and it's so powerful. I was just working with someone earlier today, and one of the key components was, how do I get on task? You know, how do I stay in that in that mode? And you know, with someone early on in their career, you want to be on task and moving your career forward every single day, and moving your life forward, and having the life of your dreams takes persistent, consistent behavior. Well, how do you do that? And I, and I started talking to the person and we were talking about how, you know, for instance, I'm a speaker and I've been a speaker now 16, 17 years. I've never missed a stage time. Well, how does that happen? Just, oh yeah, you know, just, I, I'm lucky, right? You're lucky, right. Well, there are other people that same thing where they'll go through their career and the important moments of their life, they, they hit it right on. How come we don't do that with every moment of our life? How can we, we like, that's absolute. I'll be on time for those important appointments. What other appointments I'll just blow off or I'll be late and I won't pay attention. I started early on thinking I was being followed around by a camera crew all the time. That was just a program that I put in my head. Imagine if everything that you do was broadcast in Times Square. That everything, from morning to night, everything that's going on, every conversation you're having, those little private conversations with family members or with loved ones, those conversations with with tradespeople, with your boss or with other coworkers, they're just being broadcast to for everyone to hear. Would you say things different? Would you act different? Would you conduct yourself differently? Would you scream and yell and curse? Or would you be oh so diplomatic and polite? What would be the outcome of that change? When you start thinking about those things, you conduct yourself in a different way. Imagine that is your whole life. That's a shift. That's a huge not- shift. Go ahead. That's a huge shift. What do you think? So one of the things that I will tell you, like, um, and and I understand exactly what you're saying, and I wish that I had met you like a year ago would have been really helpful because when you step into the public eye, you do have to think like that. Like you are, everything you're saying, everything you're doing is going to get shouted from the rooftops. And, you know, when I took over Success North Dallas, I was not, it's not that I was talking bad about anybody, but I would... I would be a little bit more honest than and a little bit more trusting than I probably should have in a couple of cases. And so I hear exactly what you're saying, but I hadn't thought about it like the way you just posed it. And so I think that's a really good framework. I, I want to even go one step further because it's not about being phony or, or um, putting on a persona. Mm-hmm. It's about really owning it. 
Um, my grandfather, and this will go way back, you know, when I was young, my grandfather taught me never put anything. So this is long before computers, long before the internet, never put anything in writing that you wouldn't want everyone to see. Mm. Because once you put it in writing, everyone could see it. And, and in writing business letters, writing, writing letters with correspondence to anybody. And nowadays, the truth of his words ring in my ears every day is no matter what you put on video, no matter what you put on the internet, it's there for life and yep. beyond. And so do you want those words to be broadcast? They will at some point. I guarantee you someone that you don't know is going to see it. Someone that you don't want to see it is going to see it. And you got to ask yourself, how would I feel when that happens? Because it's not about holding back. It's about, well, if they were in front of me, what would I actually say? Exactly. And, and which changes the whole dialogue and the feeling and the emotions around it. And I like what you said, and I think it's so simply put, you got to own it. If you own what you're saying, you shouldn't have any problem with it being broadcast in Times Square. Right. I think that's yeah. perfect. I think that's so key. So how does this all relate to actually interviewing? How does this all relate to walking into an interview? Man, own own it. So absolutely be walking in. I will tell you, here's here's just a little framework and a little secret. Uh, I train a lot of salespeople and I train salespeople all around the country. And, and one of the things that happens, like when I run big events, we'll have a whole team of people flying in from all around the country so that I help them get their head clear and straight to come in and be the most effective they can be when they're at the event. I teach them, imagine that you're walking into the arena the moment you leave your door of your house, it doesn't matter where you're flying to or from. The moment you leave your house, you are on stage. The moment you leave your house, you're in the arena, you're in the networking, you're at work. Because what I found, <clears throat> excuse me, what I found is that, is that same people will be taking the plane with you. Same people will be taking taxis with you, Ubers, buses from the airport. They'll be right there and you won't know it. Yes. And you won't know it till it's too late. I remember one time I was walking in, in Manhattan and I was going to a big high rise and I had an appointment in the, uh, I think it was the 14th floor of the high rise. And so I go into the lobby of the, of the building and I walk to the elevator and just as the doors were closing, anybody ever have this? Someone's walking up to the elevator. What do you do? Again, I think there are cameras on me all the time. They'll broadcast that I didn't hold the door for the person that was walking up. And just, it's a simple thing that programs me to always be my best. To always come forward with integrity. To always come forward with acting, <laughs> acting as if. The person I do hold the door, a woman walks into the elevator <laughs> presses the same button that of the floor that I'm going to. We fly up in the elevator, get out of the elevator, and end up walking to the same door. I was calling on a doctor in that building, in that office. Lo and behold, I go to the front desk. I say who I am. They announce who I am. And the woman that I was with doesn't go to the front desk. She walks right to the back. This was the doctor's mother. Oh. Now imagine, if you will, how the response to me walking in and my relationship with the doctor would have been maybe moved a little if I had let the elevator doors slam in her face. You'd never know. Start the process. Just simply start the process. When you're going for an interview, Think you're in front of everybody that's interviewing you from the moment you leave the house. I will tell you, putting on that framework of how you're going to show up, by the time you actually get in front of the people that are making the decision, 
you'll be owning it. You'll be there. You'll be completely present. That makes a huge difference in how you perform. I, I, Once you get I think that right there is so much gold. And that I, I used to say from the time you get out of your car, yeah. pretend like you're on stage. But I think that is so appropriate. Just get in that f mindset of when you walk out the door that all eyes are on you that will be potentially interviewing you or for anything that you're doing. And, you know, we didn't even get to the subject I wanted to talk about today and we're already out of time. So we may have to talk about a repeat. I don't know, because I really wanted to talk about neuro-linguistic programming and how you use that in cells. But, uh, but we did. We just didn't and call so it out. I want you to know, and it's one of the ways that I train, uh, neuro-linguistic programming is how you think, is how you program yourself is the programming of how you communicate with others and how you show up. That is everything we've been talking about. You want to know more about that, come hang out, come spend some time, because they're, everything I've taught is NLP, without a doubt. I love that. I love that so much. All right, I'm going to ask you our VIP questions real quick, and then we're going to find out oh, no. how they can get in touch with you, okay? Fair enough. All right. So if you were chosen to be one of the first colonists on Mars, what three things or people would you take with you? And I know, I mean, with six kids, you can't take any kids. All right. <clears throat> well, what do you mean I can't take any kids? No, all right. You'd have to choose we'll, three. We'll move on from there. We'll one from each from twin. <laughs> so one of the things I used to, and this is not a, a although you framed it interesting, uh, there used to be in my day, uh, the question, if you were stranded on a desert island, what are the things that you would bring with you, right? So now we're traveling to Mars. And and with that, one of the things that I always thought, oh, going on desert island, what would I bring? I'd bring the, and in the olden days, the Cyclopedia Britannica, like all the information of the human race, right? Is all there in the Cyclopedia. That was the, that was the golden uh, component. Well, now it's the internet. Now it's AI. So I would bring my AI assistant, like like uh, C-3PO, <laughs> who had all the knowledge inside of them already programmed that would have constant conversations with me in building and creating and developing. What do you think? I like that. Yeah. That's the first AI we've got. So what other two things would you take? Um, definitely the the components of formula building of of building and developing a new society if you will and there are certain components that that i utilize when i train on this and it's certain formulas certain strategies methodologies and so bringing the book of of that lays all that out so it could be easily disseminated and taught to anybody else that we'd uh, engage with how do you build how do you develop really key components of building a new society, if you will. Awesome. And uh, third is having my board of directors because you always need a group of people to to play off of, to engage with. Uh, you're not only the average of the five people you hang out with the most, but masterminding is one of the most powerful tools you can ever engage with. And so having my board of advisors who are my, my visionary in innovators, if you will, uh, that are handpicked, and so bringing my board. And so I don't know whether that's cheating because I said a board, so that's one thing versus individually a bunch of people, but yes. You know what? People get real creative with their, how they're gonna package things, but it's just one package, Casey. I'm like, it's just a question. Yeah. I'm just curious, you know? And, so. and I'm definitely a maverick, so it's a board of advisors. Okay. So that's one thing. Yeah. So what is one thing you do each morning to set your day up for success? Every day that you want success doesn't start when you wake up. That's the challenge with the question. It starts the night before. Is to create success in your day, you've got to start yesterday. Uh, it's just like you want to create success with your interview. You've got to be thinking about it long before you end up arriving there. You want to have success with your company. You've got to be planning it in advance and taking action towards it. So what do I do to, to create success is I create a knowingness of today. I know exactly how today is going to be laid out yesterday. Last night and every night, I go through my calendar and go through my task list for the day and plan everything out, make sure everything's in its place so that I know when I wake up exactly where it's going. There's a knowingness about it that gives you power 
that, that gives you the ability to to go the distance, if you will, with resiliency and persistent, consistent behavior, because you're not you're not putting out fires and things aren't surprising to you that you've got to like process all day long. You know what's happening. You laid it out yesterday. I, I think that is very true. I actually do that the morning of, but I get up really early to do it. So, cause I don't want to be thinking about those things at night. And that's just my, the way I like to do it. I don't want to be chewing on problems for tomorrow at night, but so, but I do I, get up super early to put my day in order like that. There's some process and some debate back and forth that I might have with you as to which is more effective and why and what and how that plays out. But it's an individual thing. Oh, I that, think so that, too, for sure. Going. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. My final question for you is if your life's work was being summarized in a news article, what would the headline be? What would the headline be? Well, first of all, it's it's Paul Fink, the Maverick Millionaire, and it's Breakthrough Systems, Revolutionary Success, Entrepreneurial Triumph. That would be the headline. Boom. I love it. Okay, how do people get in touch with you? I know you've got a conference coming up soon um, in Houston. So talk to us about yes. all that. So absolutely, I do conferences all around the country. You want to know how to communicate more effectively, how to engage in influence and persuasion. You want to know how to really create a passionate life step-by-step step with all these methodologies from time management to how to wake up in the morning and how to do all your thing and how to be thinking clearly, you got to come hang out. Got to spend some more time with me. I make it easy. There is a uh, a two-for gift that I have for you that you can get oh, when wow. you go to maverickoffer.com. Maverickoffer.com. And we can put that in the chat, Yep. Uh, in the in the links and all that good stuff. So maverickoffer.com and maverickoffer.com will get you two things. One, a multimedia training on time management. One of the biggest challenges people have in their life is that they have too much, too much time or too little time to engage everything that they want in their life. And they they wish they had another hour in every day, another week in every month. Well, this system gives you that. So a multimedia training, free download, absolutely go, has videos, has audios, has some pros in there, a whole ebook. So go through that. It's gold. Second component is you're going to get a free consult with me. And so you can go in there, grab hold of my calendar and actually so, spend some time. Me. And with me, it's not a sales pitch. It's not about, oh, I'm going to sell you something. It's actually about how can I make sure that you're living a great life and how can you step up into your fullest potential? And that's what the whole time together is about, how Maverick time is also in there. So grab hold, maverickoffer.com. I love it. Paul, thank you so much. I know you stepped up at the last minute um, and filled in. You weren't scheduled until late, uh, mid next year and we actually yes. had a cancellation. So it worked out perfect so that we could get you on here before your conference in March. And I hope that you will right take advantage of going to maverickoffer.com and signing up. I will be there. So if you haven't met me already and you'd like to meet me, that's a good time to do it if you're not in the Dallas area and you're in the Houston area. Right so Paul, thank you so much. And I just have one last thing to say to you. You are a VIP. Ha. What a pleasure, Casey. It's been just amazing. Thank you so much for being here. And I feel like a VIP. Thank you so much. And that's a wrap for today. Join us next week here on the We Are VIP podcast. We'd love to know how we can help you be a VIP. To find out more, log on to wearevip.com.